Good day. Welcome. This is your Daily Med with Lady V. Today we will look at the totality of sin. Because we realize from the scripture all of mankind is a sinful. One's body, one's soul, one's spirit. According to Romans chapter 3 verse 11 and 12. It tells us in Romans 3, 11 and 12. If we just start at 10, he says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understand it. There is none that, that seek it after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that do it good, no, not one. So we know that the Bible tells us this is how we are. Galatians 3 and verse 22 tells us, but the scripture had concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So we know all mankind are sinners. All were born with a sin nature. Psalm 51 and verse 5. And thirdly, the sinful nature is like poison. Psalm 58 verse 3 and 4. So we see this morning, all of man is sinful. And as the Apostle Paul allow us to know, that all God's creature, as he tells us in Romans 3, verse 11 and 12, whether we are Jew or whether we are Gentile, we sin against God or Creator. No one is righteous. Rather, we speak and do ungodly things without no apparent fear sometimes of judgment. And the awareness of sin is what we need to have because this would keep us humble in the sight of God. Knowing that in the light of who we are, he sees it, he knows our very heart. What is true about mankind, meaning men and women, the Bible says we all are gone out of the way. There is none righteous, no, not one. But Galatians 3 and verse 22 tells us salvation comes through faith. And somebody said, and if salvation comes through faith, while well, we have all this talking about the law, we, God gave it as a teacher guide sinful people until the Savior comes. So those who used to keep the law in the Old Testament times, it was a teacher, it was a guide until Jesus Christ himself came, gave his life on the cross of Calvary to redeem us from our sins. So it was necessary that mankind well, should be thoroughly convinced of sin in order the bible says that the promise of salvation by faith in jesus christ might be given and it would be given to those who believe not for those who think they can work hard because salvation is not by works neither is it by keeping the law our next um, topic is that uh, this all, as we say, parts of us have sin. We have the sin nature. Psalm 51 and verse 5, David tells us uh, that it was in sin that his mother conceived him. And we see David he was a sinning saint 
who pleaded with God for his mercy when he realized he falled short of God's divine standard. So he acknowledged in Psalm 51 that he had sinned and so he longed for cleansing, he longed for restored joy, he longed for a renewed ministry. And this shows that seeking God, that um, asking for re forgiveness, repenting, praying, confessing of our sins, all these are necessary to meeting the conditions that God lays down for his people. And especially when we find ourselves in a backslidden state, it is required of us, both men and women, to cry out to God, to ask him for a new heart, a renewed spirit. And the Bible says God will not despise us when we come making such a sacrifice he says he will accept that sacrifice of a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart because of his infinite compassion because of his mercy because of his love and because of his grace and this is promised to all who are he says those that have a crushed or a beaten spirit because of what sin does to them and the power that they realize that sin wheels upon them. David says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me he was saying, I myself am no good. I was conceived in sin. Not only have I committed sin myself, but I was born with this sin nature within me. When we look at Psalm 58, verse 3 and 4, we will also see what David says Psalm 58 verse 3 and 4 he says the wicked are estranged from the womb they go astray as soon as they are born speaking lies their poison is like the poison of a serpent they are like the deaf other that stop it the hear Verse 5 says, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. So what is David saying to us? He says the wicked are estranged from the womb, from children, childbirth. He says they go astray as soon as as they come out of the woman can speak, they know how to speak lies. He says, we are unrighteous from birth. We are estranged from God, from the womb. And if you have to deal with babies, even babies use deceit to get their own way. They know what to do to get your attention for themselves. If this situation continues, even though this little child, this baby uses it, if as they grow, this condition grows with them, the deceit becomes natural. And this little child would say, I don't know any better. I have not done anything else. Why? The Bible tells us about the heart, that where the deceitfulness is, that's where it starts. But because it becomes natural, 
it would not look as if it is a hidden sin that is dear in the heart. So as a consequence, when they grow up, they, the Bible said they will become like snakes who are filled with poison. And what does a snake do when he lets the poison out? It arm others. They will go about blindly having their own way, not even having a thought. Well, this is wrong that I am doing. When we look at David, who wrote this psalm, Psalm 51 and verse 5, or even Psalm 58, verse 3 and 4, David knew firsthand about poison being spilled out at him. We look at the story of David and Saul. David tried to explain to Saul. Saul's own son tried to explain to him that, listen, David is doing you no wrong. But he couldn't see, as the Bible says, he did not listen. He just strike out with deadly, as it were, poison at this young man. So David, who had first-hand knowledge of poison being spewed out at him, as it were, that comes from the heart of the king, even though when he had this problem and he sent for David and David would sing and play his harp for him so that the evil spirit that used to torment him would go away, he still wanted to kill this young man. But David also, who had first a knowledge of going to God for repentance, says to us, he prayed that God would create in him a clean heart, that God would renew within him a right spirit, that the word of his mouth and the meditation of his heart would be acceptable in the sight of God. Why? Because we are all sinful and every part of us, as we say, is affected by sin. So the totality of sin is that the entire man from birth or from the womb is sinful. Born with a sin nature will spew out poison out of our hearts if the heart is remains unregenerated and it is not surrendered to God. But thank God, the Bible tells us in Galatians 3.22 that salvation comes through faith and we can trust God, have faith in him and what he did through his son at Calvary that he can make our deceitful and wicked hearts clean and acceptable unto him if we come confessing our sins, the Bible says he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we do not have to be estranged from him. We do not any longer have to continue to go astray from him, but we can seek him, seek after him, run to him. He says, if you seek him, we will find him. So this day, the offer of salvation is still for those who are living in sin. Let us not really fool ourselves. The totality of sin is that we all were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and sin affect our total life, soul, spirit, and body. God bless you. Thank you again for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please share. And don't forget to visit my YouTube channel, Daily Med.